me that green light Give me that green light name Give me that green light Give me that green light name Give me that green light Give me that green light name Give me that green light Give me that green light name Tonight's green light main is sponsored by Bangor Savings Bank You matter more Good evening, and welcome to Greenlight, Maine, a series dedicated to showcasing the amazing talent, grit, and creativity of Maine's top entrepreneurs. These are the people who are building Maine's future, one dream at a time. I'm Don Gooding, Executive Director of the Maine Center for Entrepreneurial Development and Vice Chair of the Maine Angels, Maine's largest investment group. I'll be your host for tonight's show, featuring two promising entrepreneurs pitching to this evening's panel of judges for a chance at winning $100,000 in cash. Let's meet our distinguished panel of judges. First, we have Dave Anderson. Dave, we worked for a bunch of years at uh, Top Gun, a program that we run. You're also the managing director of Supply Chain Ventures, which is a venture capital group focusing on companies in the supply chain. And you're also on the board of trustees of the University of New England. Yes, Don. Currently chair, that's right? Correct. Exactly. So involved in many different aspects of entrepreneurship here in Maine. Then in the middle, we have Michelle Newyar. Michelle, great to have you here. Thank you. It's kind of fun because sometimes I've been a judge at your events. Mm -hmm. You run the Entrepreneur Center at Southern Maine Community College. Okay. And you also are owner of a business renovation center. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lot of different entrepreneur hats on. Yep. So I'm very much looking forward to your thoughts on these companies. Thank you. It's great to be here. And then finally, we have tonight's sponsor. We have Bob Montgomery Rice, CEO of Bangor Savings Bank. Bob, it's great to have you here. Oh, it's great to be here. Yeah. And of course, you all are no strangers to the entrepreneur community across the state of Maine. So I think tonight's presenters are really going to benefit from your insights and your questions about what they're trying to do with their opportunities. And with that, we will be back in just a few moments with our first presenter tonight. Please visit GreenlightMaine.com to follow the progress of your favorite entrepreneurs and find information and resources about becoming an entrepreneur yourself. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. I'm excited to introduce our first presenter of the evening, Matt James from CourseStorm. Hi, my name is Matt and I'm from CourseStorm. We offer online registration for local classes. Our customers are schools, libraries, hospitals, and museums and they'll teach you anything from CPR to crime scene investigation. So the first thing you need to know about our company is that we are obsessed with simplicity. We don't just like to make things simple. We like to make them impossibly simple. And if there's one group out there that's looking for that kind of simplicity, it's parents. So I don't know how many of you are parents, but my co-founder Brian has four kids, and I'm pretty sure there's not a musical instrument that they can't play or a sports team that they haven't belonged to. They are really busy. When you talk to parents about signing up for activities like these, they all tell you the same thing. It is a hassle. It is crazy how complicated it can be just to give someone money. So what makes it so complicated? Well, 
Let's step through a typical registration and sign our child up for Art Camp. First, we're going to have to go to the camp's website and print out their registration form. Then, we're going to have to find our checkbook. Then, we're going to have to dig through the drawers looking for an envelope. Then, we're going to have to find a pen. Then, we're going to have to find another pen that actually works. We're going to fill it all out, pray that we have stamps, and stick it all in the mail just to send it a few blocks down the road. Or, if we're lucky, this program will take online registration, where hopefully we can use our credit card, but it's almost always a nightmare. But the trick is, kids don't just have one activity. They have lots of them. So parents are repeating this process for every activity their kids are involved in. So even in the best case scenario, where they all let you register online, you're still going to Google for eight different programs, visiting eight different websites, setting up eight different accounts, and running your credit card through eight different payment systems. Thankfully, there is a simple solution to this problem and it's called CoreStorm for Kids, and it's an $800 million opportunity. We're gonna put all local programs in one place where parents can register with one account and never fill out the same information twice. So you see, parents won't just enjoy this type of convenience, they're gonna demand it. If you offer kids classes in an area we serve, you're gonna to need to be on our site. And this isn't just great for parents, it's amazing for programs too. In Maine alone, we have more than 40,000 student accounts already in CoreStorm. That means 40,000 potential new customers for these programs on day one. We're not new to this. Our company has been profitably building software for education for more than 15 years. We know this market. We know this can work. And we're really excited to make signing up for kids' classes impossibly simple. Thank you. Great job, Matt. Question. Bob, what kind of questions do you have for him? So how is the company going to make money at this? Ha, yes, I'm glad you asked. So rather than a subscription service, like a lot of other software companies, we actually take a percentage of the transaction, and that's our only cost to the, to the programs and the parents, mm -hmm. which is really great because that means when our customers grow, we grow. Mm -hmm. And we're really good at our jobs. So our customers will actually grow. They'll double in size in about the first three years. We've seen that. Dave, you've worked with a lot of software companies. What kind of thoughts do you have? What's your go-to-market strategy? Sure, so that's what's great about this. We have innovation all over the place. So the, the first thing you would think of is, well, we'll just put this across the nation, right? But, but that's like boiling the ocean. It doesn't work, especially mm -hmm. when you're talking about really local things like this. Right. And so instead, what we wanna do is identify select cities and towns, and we wanna saturate that market because the value of our network is only really there if all of the programs are on board. But we can bring those programs together, and the more we do that, the more parents come, and the more parents come, the more programs come. Mm -hmm. And so we'll take that and create a blueprint that we can use to spread into other select cities and towns and eventually cover the US. Michelle. Love the idea, having had many kids and many activities. <laughs> How are you going to manage all these multiple relationships with these small art camps and soccer camps? And Yeah, no, it's a challenge for sure. Mm -hmm. Right now we have quite a few programs. So we actually have all of the adult and community education programs in the state in a network just like this for adults. And so we've had experience doing this mm -hmm. and we think that we can scale that experience. Um, one of the nice things about running a software company is, and I, I'm, for instance, I uh, have a background in user experience. That's really my focus, simple and easy to use. And so what we try to do is make it so simple that um, we can update the software and make it so that it's sort of people train themselves on it. Thanks, Matt, that was a great pitch. We'll be right back with Greenlight Maine in a conversation with tonight's sponsor, Bangor Savings Bank.
If any of you in our television audience has a big idea, we encourage you to visit GreenlightMaine.com for a list of resources and information about starting your own business. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. We're going to have a conversation now with one of the big supporters of entrepreneurs in Maine, Bangor Savings Bank. And with us tonight, we have CEO Bob Montgomery Rice. Bob, it's great to have you here. Great to be here. Bangor Savings Bank has been supporting entrepreneurs for over 160 years now. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about the kind of role that the bank takes on? Because it's a little bit unusual, I think, from what banks typically do. Well, we try to be that advisor in a group of advisors to a business at all the different phases. And especially at this phase, it's important you have the right advisor. So we try to play and work with the other advisors in the process, whether it's an attorney or a lawyer, and just making sure the business has the right support. That's great. And I think that's led to you being a real leader in the state in terms of small business administration kind of back loans, which are the riskiest for entrepreneurs. Yeah, that's that first loan into the banking sector, and we've been the lead for the last four years uh, in the state when it comes to SBA lending. That's incredible. So you've been around now for 160 years. Your own organization has been through many, many different challenges, and we're going to see a video now that talks about that story. It's really quite an amazing one. Bangor Savings Bank opened its doors in 1852 in downtown Bangor with the goal of helping the city's working men and women save money. The bank has seen the rise and fall of the great lumber industry, survived the flood of 1902, rebuilt after the Great Fire of 1911, and remained strong during the Great Depression. Today, with 57 branches statewide and more than 720 employees, our secret to success has always been providing the people of Maine with an exceptional customer experience. We know we have to show our employees, our customers, and our communities how much they matter to us. Key to creating a best place to bank for our customers is maintaining a laser focus on the employee experience. We understand the importance of investing in our employees and earning their trust and loyalty. It's gratifying that our employees have consistently ranked us a best places to work in Maine. Small businesses are the backbone of our economy. We're proud of the partnerships we have with hundreds of businesses throughout Maine and know that by supporting the small business community, we're doing our part to keep Maine moving forward. For the fourth consecutive year, Bangor Savings Bank was recognized by the Small Business Administration as Maine's top lender to small businesses. Clearly, our efforts have made an impact on our customers, with Bangor Savings earning highest customer satisfaction with retail banking in the New England region by J.D. Power in 2015. Giving back to Maine's communities is an essential part of who we are. Bangor Savings Bank and its foundation invest over $1 million into our communities annually. Additionally, our employees contribute thousands of hours of their time to nonprofits. Bangor Savings Bank, where our employees, customers, and communities matter more.
please visit greenlightmain.com to follow the progress of your favorite entrepreneurs and find information and resources about becoming an entrepreneur yourself. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. We're ready for our next presenter, Alex Chasse from Revolution Research. Take it away, Alex. So here I have two small little samples of insulation. You can see they're both pretty similar, both hard, rigid. Obviously, there's a little color difference, pinkish purple and white. Um, and although they look really similar, they're actually made of vastly different materials. So this one here, which is on the market, you're probably more familiar with it, is styrofoam-based, oil-based. And unlike this product here, ours is eco-friendly and recyclable. It's actually pretty simple. It's made out of cornstarch, which we're all familiar with, and little tiny fibers from trees. Obviously, it's a little bit more complicated than that. I don't really want to bore you with all the, the technical stuff. But um, this product really got started um, over my partner and I, our mutual, I guess you could say, dislike for cold weather. He's from a really warm part of Turkey, uh, moved here, saw snow for the first time, really cold. And I'm from Maine, but more of a Maine summer guy myself. The winter, not so much. Uh, so we were joking around about kind of cold weather and started looking at insulation. And we realized there are really no eco-friendly products on the market. So we decided to form our own company. And after about four years of research, this is what we developed, eco-friendly, recyclable insulation. Now, the insulation market right now is around $10 billion, and that's expected to increase by 7.6% annually. We really look to target green building. I don't know how uh, familiar you are with LEED. stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. Those buildings tend to be more green and eco-friendly. However, they still utilize the styrofoam-based insulation, so we see a perfect opportunity for our product here. Um, obviously, there are some big competitors out there, or as my partner would say, big sharks, and we're kind of the underdogs. But you know, it's, we realize that's kind of you know, the American dream, being the underdogs, small guys, taking on the big guys. So you know, we want to work with you guys, state of Maine. Together, we really want to take on the big guys. Great job. Dave, what questions does this bring up for you? Alex, where, where did you develop this technology? Um, glad you asked. We really developed this technology up at UMaine. Um, I went to UMaine myself, and my partner is a PhD student there, finishing up. And so this whole idea kind of, we started kicking around up there. Um, we've gotten some NSF funding and have kind of rented some lab space up there, and that's really where this all developed. Michelle, you and your husband have been in the construction mm -hmm. industry. What thoughts do you have on this? How are you going to break in and develop those key relationships, as, with you, as you said, the big sharks? Uh, the big sharks. Actually, one of the big sharks, I don't really want to name names, actually reached out to us. Mm -hmm. Said they want to collaborate on the project and kind of learn more about it. We respectfully declined, kind of want to do our own thing at the moment. But mm -hmm. um, we really look to foster these relationships by reaching out. We've had um, a lot of exposure and actually a lot of people surprisingly reaching out to us mm -hmm. that are interested. So kind of just fostering and developing those relationships as they come. Now, Bob, of course, as a bank, you all are involved heavily in the construction industry. What thoughts does this bring to your mind? So what's going to be key to getting you to profitability? Um, geez, a lot of things. Um, so obviously, I talked a little bit about what it's made of. Um, and some of those have varying price points. Um, and as more mills open up that make these small wood fibers, we look to drop price points by that. And hopefully some continued NSF funding would allow us to open up our own manufacturing facility. And I think those would be key to um, turning us to profitability. And Alex, just at the beginning, what do you see as the price premium that you're going to be able to charge these customers? Um, baseline right now, we're looking at probably around a 20% uh, more than uh, the competitor. So say just throw some rough numbers, I guess you could say, if it costs you 5,000 to insulate with the other material, it'd be about 6,000 for ours. So mm -hmm. it's very close, comparable. Dave, on the venture capital side of things, is this the kind of thing that a venture capitalist might look uh, fondly upon? Uh, yes, yeah, and, and I, I'm interested in, you talked about developing a joint, joint development agreements with some other people, that, that, that would be a key way of go to market for you guys is to mm -hmm. uh, work with the chemical companies or, or whomever to do this. And, and Michelle, do you see these guys working with some of the entrepreneurs that you're having going through SMCC? Absolutely. And what is your timeline for launching and getting out there and, and growing this? Um, that's a little, our timeline right now is a little flexible. So we did get some NSF funding. Um, and uh, so we really look to 
for this year for the NSF funding, kind of take our product to the next level and hopefully get some additional funding. So we're looking at three to five years. Great pitch, Alex. We'll be right back with our judges' deliberations on these two wonderful presentations. And we're back with Green Light, Maine. It's time now for our distinguished panel of judges to share your opinions about these two presenters. So Dave, let's start with you. What did you like about the Core Storm presentation? Well, I, I think Core Storm is solving a real problem that parents have in terms of scheduling things and making sure their kids get to where they should be at the right times. Having it in one place, to me, was a, was a very interesting technology. Michelle? What I loved, it was, uh, he said it a couple times, the simplicity. I could understand his concept and the problem he was trying to solve. And as a parent, I could have used that 10 years ago. I definitely agree <laughs> with you. How about you, Bob? You know, it was a great presentation, and you could just feel his passion and excitement about the, the product and the service. It was amazing. Yep. But I, I felt there, there are certainly some challenges he faces, like all mm -hmm. entrepreneurs do. Mm -hmm. uh, any thoughts on that, Dave? Getting, getting to market, this is not an inexpensive way to get, mm -hmm. to get parents online, to get school systems online, camps online. It's going to be an expensive proposition to make this happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely a challenge there. Any others, Michelle, that you, you see? You know, I saw just a, a, the financial package. He didn't really talk about, you know, how are they going to make money? And I just still in the back of my head was thinking, where's the money in this? Yeah, it's definitely hard to see. Of course, it's hard to say in a full three-minute three presentation. Uh, any other thoughts, Bob? Yeah, you just, you know, what's the threats of free services and, you know, really can you commoditize yep, this? Yep, yep, free. Mm -hmm. Freemium is definitely a challenge for all yeah. of these. Mm -hmm. Well, then we also have Revolution Research, really a kind of different business. Uh, Bob, any initial thoughts of what you liked about that presentation? Well, you know, finding a nice solution that's green and can really, you know, change the dynamic in the installation, that was pretty exciting. Yeah, and Michelle, I'm sure with oh, yeah. your construction industry, backing. Absolutely. I mean, I, it's a product that's needed. It, I, I, I just love the concept behind it. And I love his energy and that he's young and he's going for it. Yeah, definitely what we like to see yeah. more of here in Absolutely. Maine. How about you, Dave? Maine products, Maine technology. I, I, I'm mm -hmm. all for that. I, I thought they did a really good job. And I, the fact that they have major companies like Owens Corning calling them up and asking for uh, to work with them, that's a real sign that there's a uh, Definitely Success. a sign that there's something yeah. going on there. Exactly. But there are, of course, challenges. Now, Michelle, mm -hmm. you from the construction mm -hmm. industry, what do you think, think their biggest challenges I think the biggest challenges be? in the green industry is convincing the customer to spend more. They say they want it, but when push comes to shove, they pull back and don't use the green technology because it's cheaper not to. And so I think that getting their price point down mm. is going to be key. Yeah, so there's not as maybe as much premium yep. as they think that there might be. Yeah. Dave, any thoughts? Well, I think it's, again, it's a go-to-market situation for them. You know, doing this with through a channel and not through trying to do it yourself is going to be a critical part of, of them being successful. They, they, need, they need good channel relationships. Absolutely. Yep. And, and Bob, any final thoughts? I, I wish I'd heard more and had a chance to talk more about how they're protecting the idea. You know, they've got yeah. the nice idea there, but how do they protect it so they can... So maybe we can help them refer to some intellectual property attorneys yeah. mm -hmm. who might help figure out the patentability of what yeah. they have to make sure that they can uh, go forward. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to think about the two of these together? They're really quite different businesses, huh? 
Mm -hmm. It's uh, quite a challenge. Well, we're going to be back in just a few minutes, and we're going to hear how these judges wrestle through all of these different challenges that all businesses face and come up with their own conclusion of who's going to get the green light going forward here on Greenlight Maine. We hope you at home will support your favorite entrepreneur tonight by going to greenlightmain.com and clicking on their GoFundMe link. You can make a difference. And we're back with Greenlight Maine. It's that time we've been waiting for. We've heard two fantastic presentations from two really exciting companies. Now, judges, you've had your time to deliberate. It's time to show the audience who you think are going to be the companies that get the green light. Are you ready? Okay, it's time to show. Is it going to be Core Storm or Revolution Research? And the answer is, it's unanimous. That means tonight's winner is Alex Chasse of Revolution Research. Congratulations, Alex. He's gonna be moving on to the final round of 13 companies that are competing for $100,000 in cash. And you at home have an opportunity to go to greenlightmain.com and vote with your hearts and dollars for the company of your choice. We'll see you again next week for another two exciting presentations on Greenlight Maine. Congratulations. Greenlight Maine would not be possible without the support of all of our corporate sponsors. Thank you. Greenlight Maine has been brought to you by Bangor Savings Bank. You matter more. Prize money for Greenlight Maine is provided by Maine Accelerates Growth through a grant by the Maine Community Foundation, stewards of charitable giving, helping donors help Maine. Outreach and community engagement in partnership with Maine Startup and Create Week, a conference worth skipping work for. Furniture for Greenlight Maine is provided by Thomas Mosier Furniture, handcrafted American furniture since 1972. Broadcast facilities provided by NESCOM, the New England School of Communications at Husson University.